We are uh, here to talk about a report which is a recommendation, contains a series of recommendations for the pharmacologic management of hypertension. The intention of the report is to guide healthcare providers, that's all kinds of physicians and um, other providers such as nurse clinicians, in how to manage blood pressure with drugs uh, in adults, that is people over age 18. This study is a little bit different from previous guidelines in that it's all based on evidence that's derived from randomized clinical trials or randomized controlled trials where a treatment, whether it's a specific drug or a specific threshold and goal for treatment, was derived from a comparison with a control group, either a placebo group or somebody that got a different treatment. So we're using the highest level of medical evidence that you can have. And this is a process endorsed by the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences. So having said that, we, the committee, asked three major questions. We would have liked to have asked a lot more, but resources would not admit that. Question one was, what is the threshold for treatment? In other words, what is the uh, patient's blood pressure that requires medical treatment based on evidence. Number two is what is the goal of treatment? What is the number that you need to go to uh, in order to achieve what we call control? And then number three, what drugs should you use? The, it was necessary to update the guidelines because there's a lot of new evidence from clinical trials about uh, not only the benefits of treatment, but we're beginning to see harms fr in patients from too aggressive treatment of blood pressure. Old people, um, you have to be careful about what we call old, uh, having falls or postural uh, blood pressure drops when they stand up, or being treated with many, many medications such that cost becomes an issue or adverse effects of the medicine become an issue. That's one thing. Number two, there have been new uh, drug classes developed for hypertension since 2003, since our old guideline. Uh, and we're much more conscious of the need for evidence-based treatment uh, as opposed to what we call expert treatment, which is very nice, your doctor's best opinion about what works. Uh, but the, the problem with relying on expert opinion only, it's like being a parent. You think that all of your children are beautiful and intelligent and talented. And a doctor that uses certain treatments gets to favor them and somehow is blind to the adverse effects or the excessive cost. According to randomized controlled trials for persons over age 60, the uh, threshold is the threshold for treatment. Everybody with a systolic blood pressure greater than 150 millimeters of mercury or and or diastolic pressure of greater than 90 millimeters of mercury should be treated with medicine. And the goal should be just to get the blood pressure lower than that level, less than 150 over 90. Now there's a corollary to that. If you have a patient who you treat and the blood pressure goes down below that level, even less than 140 over 90, that's fine. You don't need to discontinue treatment. But your goal if in the untreated patient should be less than 150 over 90. That's for people over age 60. For people under age 60, there's really, interestingly, there's no firm evidence about what the threshold should be, systolic blood pressure threshold should be. So we adopt, here's an expert, an area where, ex, here is an area where expert opinion comes in. We adopt the old standard of less than 140 should be the goal. And also there is evidence for a less than 90 millimeters mercury diastolic goal. So there's there's firm evidence for lowering the diastolic to less than 90 in people less than age 60. The evidence is not there for less than 140, but we, um, by expert opinion, apply that standard. The other thing that's new is there are a couple of important special categories of people with hypertension, that is those with diabetes and those with chronic kidney disease, both of which are becoming more common. And we, uh, based on some evidence and also expert opinion, adopted a threshold of greater than 140 over 90 and the goal of less than 140 over 90 uh, for both of those groups. Diet and exercise are very important in every 
person with hypertension should be counseled about an optimal lifestyle. We did not deal with that issue specifically. There was another group that did that and we endorsed their recommendations and those are actually available on the internet and they're published. So I think drug choices are very important. Uh, we compared, looked at all of the drugs that had been used in all the randomized controlled trials that we judged to be of high standard. And we found that there were four classes of antihypertensive drugs that had been shown. Our goal is to save lives, to prevent heart attacks, strokes, kidney failure, and, and heart failure. And those are angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers, and thiazide type diuretics. And that's alphabetical order. There's no specific preference. All of those have been shown to be useful in the general patient uh, with high blood pressure. For non-black patients, that is uh, white people and Hispanics, all of those classes seem to be equal. For African Americans or blacks, if they're black people don't live in the United States, uh, calcium channel blockers and thiazide type diuretics seem to be better than, than the uh, RAS blockers, better than ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers as first-line treatment. In all cases, we're talking about first-line treatment. That is the first drug. Once that's been accomplished, then you can add drugs from the other classes because they're complementary. Uh, one thing that should not be done is ACE inhibitors and ARB should not be used together because they have the same general mechanism of action and have no added benefit and may have some adverse effects. For people with chronic kidney disease, it's useful to either start with or add an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker for preservation of renal function, not necessarily to prevent heart attack and stroke. That's an added nuance. We also have recommendations that are not evidence-based, but based on the expert opinion of committee members which include family practice doctors and clinical pharmacologists and nephrologists and cardiologists, so there's multiple expertise there about what the timing of treatment should be, when you should add another drug, when you should consult um, a hypertension expert, and so on. Um, but I think the most important thing to remember is all of these guidelines are guidelines. They're broad statements about the minimum about what should be done. Uh, we realize that every patient is different, every physician is different, and we're not bypassing uh, the expert opinion of your doctor who knows you very well. Um, and we're not covering every situation. We don't discuss how to measure blood pressure in detail. We don't discuss special situations like um, pregnancy or the management of a patient who's had a heart attack or a stroke. Those are special conditions for which there is other guidance available in the literature. And always, always, always your doctor's expert opinion.